Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the open packed, also known as the loose packed position, and the close packed position of the hip joint. So this has to do with basically how tight the ligaments around the capsule are, as well as the stability of the articular surfaces of the joint itself. So we'll do this by giving you a little quiz that I put out on my Instagram and Facebook recently and talking about the anatomy using lots of pretty pictures to help you understand the concepts. And then be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I will give you some takeaways for how to modify your movement practice or your yoga practice uh, to make this information, this, this kind of dry anatomy stuff actually matter for your practice. So let's get to it. Hey, real quick, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your anatomy loving friends. All right, let's get to the video. So we're going to start off with a little quiz. Here's the quiz. The question is, which hip joint capsule is under the greatest tensile load in this position? Is it the right hip joint or the left hip joint? Pause the video if you need time to think, and then we'll explain the answer. So when we look at this question, what we want to know is, well, let's break it down. We need to know what is the greatest tensile load. So that word is probably going to have a very specific definition. Um, so some people don't necessarily know the difference between tensile and compressive. And I just recently uh, released a series of uh, posts regarding compressive forces, specifically during flexion, internal rotation, and adduction of the hip. So some people might have thought that because this position here has some flexion in it, that maybe that was a compressive force, which is not exactly true because it's not flexed enough for that. So that would not be correct. Um, that, and regardless, that would be looking for a compressive, not a tensile load. So what we want to know is what does tension mean? Well, essentially what we're thinking here is um, let's just think about the front side of the body and this area here is all under tension. It's a stretch. So that's what tension is, is a stretch. So the correct answer is that the right side is under the greatest tensile load because the ligaments of the actual hip joint itself are being stretched maximally in this position on the right side, whereas on the left side, they are actually in their most loose position. So let's look at that. What does, first of all, what does tension mean? Well, tension would be um, in comparison to compression. So we've got tension and we've got compression. And all tension is, is that we're pulling something apart. So we're pulling um, a fiber, we're pulling it in opposite directions. Whereas compression is exactly the opposite. We've got basically squishing a thing uh, together, okay? Now, both of these forces are important in um, growth and development and uh, bone development, muscle growth, etc. And so neither of these is good or bad. We're just, they're different things. And so that's what this video is explaining. So let's look at the anterior view, the front side. So we're looking at this skeleton here from the front, okay? Meaning this right here is the right side. This is the right side of the person. They're looking right at us. Now we've got these ligaments here. And what we want to see here is that the ligaments connect from a bone right here to another bone. And the fibers are running in this direction. Now imagine for a moment that instead of this ligament, that this was a muscle like the psoas. The psoas comes down like this, right? This would be your psoas. Um, actually, it connects to the lesser trochanter, so it would connect right here like that. That would be your psoas. Well, how do you stretch your psoas? You take your leg behind you. You extend the hip joint. So in exactly the same way, if we want to stretch the hip joint capsule or these ligaments, and if we extend the hip joint, then these ligaments are going to become longer. They're going to get stretched. So we're going to look at this from the side view now. And you can see that here we are, we're looking at this person, their right side. So this is the right ilium and the right femur. And here's your hip joint. Now, notice that the 
fibers of the hip joint ligaments here are running around the front. They're wrapping forward and around. They're not attaching to the bone like this. They're not running this direction. If they were, then we would have to move the joint in exactly the opposite direction to stretch the ligaments. So what we're gonna see is that if we start here, and here's our femur, so our femur runs like this, right? If we move our femur back so that the new position of the femur is like this, so here's our new position of our femur, well, the ligaments that were this long, now they have to, they, they stay anchored here, but they have to wrap all the way around to here now. So they've become longer, okay? We're gonna see the same thing with the ligaments on the backside. So here we are, and we've got another set of ligaments. Now, this is not a video to talk about the anatomy of every ligament, and I'm not gonna name all the ligaments because it doesn't matter. They all make up a capsule. It's just a set of ligaments that wrap around the entire surface of uh, the joint in all directions, and it houses that joint and creates stability. And they all happen to wind up in this way. So if you notice here, these fibers are running from behind and then they run around and down. So they would actually go over. Um, so this would be on the front side of the femur. So if we look at this, so I've changed the view. So here we are, we're looking at the person from behind. Now I've changed the view here so that we're looking at the person from behind, but more of a bird's eye view. And you can really see that these fibers, which go from underneath uh, and they connect to the um, sitting bone basically, and they wrap around and they would really, they would go over, they would kind of go over and around. So again, if we take the femur backwards, it's going to tighten those ligaments, okay? So it's tightened the front ligaments and it tightens the back li ligaments. Um, and likewise, if we internally rotate the femur, so if we um, spin the femur around in this direction, then it's also going to take this point here and this point here and move them away from one another, so we're stretching those ligaments. Let's look at this one more way now, and let's bring in this concept of loose and open pack. So essentially here, if we take the femur and we were to move the femur now into, so here's the um, head of the femur. If we were to move it backwards and internally rotate it and adduct it, then we would see that the ligaments become the most tight. So that would be your close packed position. Whereas your open packed position would be if we took the head of the femur and we move it forward and externally rotate it like that, and we flex it and abduct it. Okay, so we flex, abduct, and externally rotate. And that would be the open pack position, all the ligaments would uncoil, okay? So think of it about like wringing out a, a towel. The more you twist in one direction, the tighter the ligaments get. And then if you twist the other direction, then the, the towel unwinds. So it's exactly, it's similar to that. So the close packed and loose packed or open packed positions. The main difference here is that the close packed position involves tension. So we are pulling things apart. It involves maximal joint tension. It involves uh, the ligaments becoming tense. They're tightened. The joint play, the, uh, the amount that the ball inside of the socket can physically kind of move around is like not at all. It cannot move around at all in this close packed position. Um, I say it all, but I mean as little as is as, as possible. Now, normally, the close-packed position in every in many other joints, normally it would involve the least amount of um, surface area where the actual joint surfaces are physically contacting uh, each other. But the hip joint is the opposite. So in in this case, <clears throat> we are going to have le the least amount of articulation of the actual hip joint. Um, 
I, not, and this isn't to scare you, but just fun, I guess, fun fact. Dislocations aren't fun. But if you kept going, if you really kept forcing it and you had some kind of extreme trauma to the hip, then this would mean that the, the hip pops out and dislocates anterior. So the head of the femur dislocates forward. Whereas the open packed um, position here is going to be, I hope, I hope this looks like I'm kind of like uncoiling, right? We're uncoiling um, the ligaments. They're loose. They're kind of, they're slacked. So minimal joint tension. The ligaments are loose or lax. The joint play is maximal. So in this, because the tension around the joint is very, it's non-existent, the actual head of the femur can move around inside the socket. Now you have to decide if that's good or bad. Sometimes that's good, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Sometimes that's bad, depending on what you're trying to achieve. It's not always good or always bad. And uh, again, normally this would, the open pack position would be the least amount of joint surface, but in the case of the hip, because of the anatomy and the angles of everything in the uh, ball and the socket, when you put them together in the open packed position, you actually have the most articulation. So in a way, the joint is more stable, but then because of the ligaments being less tight, the joint is less stable. At, so it's a little confusing. So. Um, again, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So let's uh, return back to our anatomy quiz. In our open packed position, we need flexion. So here we go. There's our flexion. The knee is uh, raising up. We need abduction. So we have that. Here's, uh, here's the midline and the knee has moved out to the side. So that's abduction. And we need external rotation, which we have. We have the um, leg is spinning externally. In the close packed position, where we're gonna have maximal tension, so this was the correct answer to the original quiz, we're going to have extension, which we have. We have the leg is moving backwards. We need adduction, which we have. Again, here's the midline, and we're moving towards the midline. And we need internal rotation, which the toes really give away. So here we go we're internally rotated. And that puts the hip joint on maximal tension, okay? Maximal tension, close packed. Least amount of tension of the joint capsule, open packed or loose packed. So what? If we understand the forces that are happening in the joint, we can make this matter for movement. If we need more joint play, if we need to have more space and freedom in the hip joint, the open packed position allows that. If we need stability and tension in the ligaments, we need the close packed position. If you've ever wondered, well, which position of the hip joint are you actually stretching ligaments themselves? Some people don't wanna be stretching their ligaments. Understandably, that's fine. Well, in the splits, for example, in Hanumanasana in, uh, for yoga people, you are definitely stretching the ligaments of the hip joint for sure because it's the close packed position you are absolutely stretching the ligaments of the hip in the in uh, when the leg is behind you even in a lunge a standard yoga lunge is a very long long stance your leg you, you take the longest stance that you can in most yoga classes and that is way beyond maximal hip extension which means you start compensating through the pelvis and the low back but the ligaments of the hip are only going to let you go so far. So those ligaments are on tension. So tension, the, you have to decide what you want to do with this knowledge. Okay. So is tension good? Yeah. Sometimes is tension bad? Sometimes, right? It depends. So what we can boil this down to is that tension creates a restriction in motion. The more tension you put on something, the less freedom it has to move around. Okay. Especially with the joint capsule it won't be able to move as freely. In the open packed position, you will have maximum joint play. The head or, well, in any joint, the um, joint surfaces as they're articulating, as they're uh, moving against each other, in the open packed position, there's more freedom of motion. If you're looking to have the least amount of strain on the joint, because your joints are 
irritable, then the open packs position would give you a lot of freedom. However, if you're looking to have a lot of stability through the ligaments, um, then the open pack position is not the position because it's way too much freedom. So it's up to you if that's important. You can alter the difficulty of motion by understanding how these, um, this is what I just explained. If you're in the loose packed position, it's easier for that joint to move. You will have more restriction in motion the further you get towards that end range. And which, uh, which tissues are you actually affecting? Are you affecting muscles, tendons, or ligaments? Well, uh, if you're affecting muscles, you're probably affecting tendons but you're not necessarily affecting ligaments as much. So in the close packed position, you're definitely affecting ligaments a lot. In the open packed position, you can really target muscles. Anywhere in between would be a spectrum or a gradient. I hope this joint, uh, this, <laughs> I hope that this video taught you a little bit about how the ligaments of the hip tighten and they coil up or they uncoil and they loosen, they allow for freedom. Um, I hope this has given you some ideas that you can use to make more intelligent choices for your movement or yoga practice. And I hope that you'll share this video with your anatomy loving friends. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel uh, so you know when I release future videos. Please comment, 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 comment comment, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel. I already said that. Share this with your friends. I'm rambling. Thank you for watching. I can't believe you made it to the end of a video. 15, 16, 17 minutes are we in? You have the attention span of a, I don't know, an elephant. I assume they have long attention spans. They have really long memories. Okay, well, I guess if you stick around to the end of my videos, you get to see me trail off a little bit. So see you next time.